Tonight we're going to be joined by one of the, the most successful reggae bands in the world. They started their career in 1979 in Birmingham. They went on to sell 70 million records. They've released 62 singles, been up for a Grammy and a Brit Award. They are UB40. This is Ali Campbell, Astro and Mickey here. UB40, the original boys are back on the road, guys. Yeah, well done. Welcome well done. to ME1. Yeah, man, pleasure to be here. It's, listen, look, these guys can't wait for tonight out there. They're going to love you guys. We're I'm, the same, we're the same. We, we, can't, we can't wait. You can't wait? No, nah, I'm jumping at the bit, mate. Jumping at the bit. Guys, you've been around since 1978, okay? 79, yeah. 79. Yeah. How did some guys suddenly from Birmingham play their first gig in the Hare and Hound in, in your town? Yeah. And then suddenly, you know, you was a reggae band. We were. Well, we were trying to be a reggae band at the time. Um, we were sort of shirt tailing the two tone movement, you know, and uh, that helped us to get gigs. The fact that we were a multiracial band and they thought we might have something to do with ska. But of course, when we started playing, we were too slow and the skinheads would seek on us and flub on us and all that, you know. Oh, happy but, days. Uh, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it did help us get gigs and stuff, you know. But we were never anything to do with the ska revival, you know. We were a reggae band and a British reggae band, you know, so. An influence. I mean, where was your Astro? I mean, where was your influences in the band? And saying, you know, these are the kind of artists that we want to get out there to a white, basically an audience, a UK well, audience. Well, the easiest way to explain who our influences were was the uh, Labour of Love collection that we done, uh, volumes one, two, three, and four. They're all the songs that we grew up listening to as as kids, and we just be, well in our neighbourhoods, uh, they were all hits. You never heard them on the radio, but every single house party or youth club well, that's where you was listening to them I, I first heard of these guys at blues parties and, and reggae that's how i got into to reggae basically same i mean us. same as us and you know the likes of johnny osborne dennis brown yeah, johnny like that. clark yeah, yeah absolutely and obviously the, the, the legends jimmy cliff and guys like that you know and no offense today but who's out there influencing young guys to make reggae music well, I don't know, you've got Raging Fire, you've got Chronics, you know, you've got people like Busy Signal and Laden, you've got Mavado, you've got Vibes Cartel, you know, you've, got, know a, Cartel, yeah, you've yeah. got a nice and healthy reggae scene out there. And if you look at, the, you know, reggae across the world, it's, it's more influential now than it's ever been. You know, the contemporary dance music that we're all listening to owes it, owes it all to dub and all to Sly and Rubber, you know, really. Sly Dunbar beats all over the world. I mean, I started playing dr drums because of Sly you know, and Robbie, do you know what I mean? If there's one artist from the last 40 years that you didn't get a chance to play with, who would it be? Oh, it'd have to be Bob Marley. Easy. I mean, Bob was the man. Oh, yeah, Well, we, nearly, we nearly got a chance to tour with him, uh, but he died. You know, we, we, we'd just been asked to go on tour with him when uh, in 1981, wasn't it? And uh, unfortunately, we were on the road when he died. Uh, we were in New York, actually. And funnily enough, we went to this Crazy Eddie's, didn't we, in New York, and uh, to see if there was any reggae in there. And there wasn't. And then Bob Marley died. And then the next day, it was filled with reggae and with Bob Marley albums and all that. So it just goes to show that they were there, but they just weren't, you know, prominent. And like I said, I mean, you've sold over 70 million records. Yeah. Over 70 million. You are the second most successful ba reggae band out there apart from Bob and the Whalers. Yeah. For you, what has been the most biggest highlight playing tonight at Rochester? <laughs> uh, well, this is a highlight. I mean, every day above ground is a good day for us. And oh, yeah, uh, the thing is, it's, it's great really just to be playing still, you know, and for people to be coming. I can hear the audience now. And to have an audience that's ready and waiting for us to play, is like, it's great, isn't it? You know, after doing it for so long. And if there's one, one new song or a song that you'd like to cover, I mean, I, people said you're a cover band, to me you're not. You know, it just so happens that you've played, you basically played homage to your... Yeah, well, we did 24 albums with UB40. I made 24 albums with them, and, and three of them were cover albums, right? So 21 weren't. And our biggest selling album is Promises and Lies, which is a self-penned album, you know, that sold 10 million copies, you know. So... Um, We've never, we're not a covers band, but we're a reggae band, and that means that you do covers because it's synonymous to reggae, you know. Exactly. I mean, every great reggae artist has covered another song. Yeah, and all the reggae that we grew up on was covers, was, uh, was covers of R&B songs and, and soul numbers, you know, so so. I mean, you're back on the road, and it's, it's brilliant to see you guys. Guys, have a wonderful evening tonight. People, give it up for UB40. Put it, put it. Put it.